had an illegal eviction at, at 11 Appleton Street on my home, and we lived there since 2007. And the marshal showed up here in um, July with a 72-hour notice that turned into a 15 minutes notice and made an illegal arrest by slamming me to the ground with cuffs on where I had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, also I got charged with two trespassing charges in my own house where a mover also put the trespassing charge on me that I do not know. Well, I was never served any papers at all. I was never given any papers to come to court. And I never know the mover, Jeff Harris, before. I never seen him before. I really don't know what he looked like right now, other than bringing their personal truck, stealing property out of my house. It took them four days to keep taking stuff out of my house. I guess they kept what they wanted. They really robbed my house. No proceeding Did, at are all. Are you paying a mortgage? Is your no, house paid? No, the mortgage was paid off. Now they got the house up for sale again, the same way he sold it to me. He got it up for sale for 32000 again this week. It's been only 10 or 12 days, and they doing it again this week. The, um, to shift the mortgage again. They're selling it just like he sold it to me for $32,000. It's worth $130,000. But they're trying to sell it for $30,000 to get it closed out right away to keep me from getting it back. So if they sell it to one of their friends, they list it for thirty, dollars but they'll sell it for five hundred dollars like they did my other house just to get it off of their hands. They sold one of my properties for $500 just to keep me from having it. So, so you have the deed? Yes. And it's the in your name? been in my name since 2007. And they said that the seller never cleared it with Countrywide because he filed bankruptcy. That the seller um, never cleared everything up with Countrywide. But even if he didn't, I offered to buy the lien back from them that he owed. I went from twenty thousand, they wouldn't take it. I went sixty thousand, they wouldn't take it. I went all the way up to ninety thousand, and they wouldn't take me to pay his lien off. Not my lien in my name. It was the seller's lien, and they wouldn't take it. I have it in writing from their realtor wrote each offer to take this house back for me and they wouldn't accept no offers from their realtor. All the emails are from their realtor. I have never even known the seller personally at all. Their realtor is the one that wrote my deal the same way he's trying to write it over to stiff someone else a year or two from now. He's going to try it again. What, uh, what Virginia just described is what's called a flipping, a house flipping. And that is a an issue in which, uh, a scenario I should say, in which a lender or actors uh, uh, will take a house um, that has, from which it started at a uh, depressed uh, issue. Once she put the money into the property and got the house in uh, good standing as far as uh, monetary value, bringing a house up to snuff, what they do is uh, they fraudulently disguise the way in which they're trying to do the loan but there were some things that happened within the action of doing the loan that were bait and switches all right so what happens is subsequently when she starts talking to uh the realtor the realtor is one of the actors in this whole scheme it's a flipping scheme because he ends up as the broker he's a realtor and he's also a lister again He's also the uh, party in which is trying to flip the party. I mean, to flip the uh, the house. He has the property listed again right now, two days ago, for thirty-two thousand dollars. How can you sell a hundred thirty thousand dollar house for th for five hundred dollars, or you know, to get me to bid back on my own house? Mm -hmm. That's what he's trying to do at this point. When Countrywide have been sued for for flipping mortgage, it's like Don said, for flipping and taking people's name off the mortgage because my name is still on these deeds already at the county. They took it off at the city to pull this to pull this mess here. That's I own the property. They gave us the adjournment date to December 6th. Um, I wouldn't let them dismiss charges because I don't have no charge for trespassing in my own house. I own my house. And I'm not going to let no mover give me charges in my own house. And he the robber also. And he's you don't rob my house and you trespassing. Great. We'll go to trial if necessary. Well, in effect, people think, which is a misconception, that it's just African Americans that have been affected. What it is, is a loan to own scam, uh, a scheme. Uh, the, the premise and the theory of the scheme works so closely to eminent domain from a corporation standpoint that it's actually crazy and it's almost unconceivable that this could happen. Uh, you know, so my thing is, uh, when I started getting into the investigation into this thing, I wanted to find out every aspect of who was involved as far as actors, players, strawmen, 
everything across the board. And that's what led me to Virginia, to Kathy Lennon, to all these other people in which, quote unquote, people think that it's just happening to African Americans, but on the inner city. But this thing is all over the country. Uh, it's, it's, it's ways in which they disguise uh, the theories uh, based upon uh, economics, uh, race. So many things come into, into play into this thing. Uh, insurance fraud, bankruptcy fraud, uh, estate fraud where people are getting ripped off that have estates. For example, there's a, 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 a Caucasian woman that I've been helping lately also that lives on East Avenue. Mm -hmm. And she has a million dollar property, uh, which also involved in the state. And through this scheme and the devices of the scheme, they're trying to take that property from her at this very moment for $200,000. I think somebody would be crazy to not try to uh, get themselves in a situation where they couldn't get an honest loan in this city. But it, it, it turns out that Rochester is a cesspool, you know, and uh, people that try to get the help to get out from under the guises of uh, the theories of these actors or players uh, cannot, you know, and people think that they can't be affected, you know, because of status or race or whatever. They're fools. You know, uh, it's inconceivable for me to think that because they haven't gotten them today through the scheme that tomorrow they won't because they will. We are going to start a petition with all the people that maybe we stand together in this city. We can get something done here. If we stand alone, if we, they're going to come at one of us one at a time. But if we stand together, we might have a voice. If the community comes out before it happened to you, you can come out and help us get this thing taken care of, and we might can save what's happening around here. I think that's important. I think dialogue is one of the biggest keys to this whole thing because, you know, I remember years ago people used to talk and know each other's neighbors. You know, it was a community that was that village, and uh, somewhere, I don't know what's in the water in Rochester, but it's, it's, it's basically a lot of places right now, I have to admit, but things do have to change, like Virginia was just saying. I think that brings me back to uh, the reality of, of when you try to tell people and make it known in Rochester because of the way this thing plays. Uh, people are being muted where they can't get lawyers because the lawyer pool is tainted. This is not only happening in Rochester, this happened all across the country. So, you know, what my thing was, was to trace the fingerprint in all of this, to see where it traces, to see where it leads. That's the impo important part. You, well, you, you start from the top up, the people at Wall Street, the lenders who, uh, the lenders, the bankers, the fraudulent lenders and bankers, uh, Everyone that played a part, a role, uh, whether it's the guy that claimed that he served the affidavit of service, which uh, the probability uh, is probably that he did not ever serve that affidavit of service. So the whole thing is all fraudulent. Um, there needs to be a, uh, a federal investigation on this thing, and there also needs to be a uh, an issue where, you know, because matter of fact just thinking you know if you go and you start checking 90% uh, of the politicians see where they get their contributions from their financial contributions from bankers research search the banker or the lender and see what politicians they contribute to and you'll see a lot going on I just want the community to come out together and stand with us to straighten this out. It's not just my house or the neighbors. All the churches that even the people that I know personally, I want their attention to come out and help straighten this matter out. And my hopes in this thing is to link and network with uh, other organizations across the United States because that needs to happen because uh, in, in the premise of this scheme, uh, people's jobs are affected in these things. Uh, there's so much that in a half hour's time or an hour's time, you can't cover all the bases of all of the substances that go into the premise of these kind of schemes, you know? So I'm hoping that every organization or individual homeowner or whoever will uh, start networking and find Take Back the Land and all the other uh, effective uh, organizations, social organizations to get into this thing and really put a foot in it.